Well, I mean, even though we have had some heavy rainfall this winter, apparently we still have a long way to go. I mean, what are the dam levels currently looking like? Well, across the country, dam levels are between about 40 and 60 percent. So KwaZulu-Natal is, is the emptiest uh, on a, prov a provincial level mm. at about 40 percent. And then um, the other provinces are all, uh, are all at around 60. And then um, Gauteng is a bit higher and that's at about 80. So um, dam levels are still not looking great. They're looking less than what they were a year ago. Um, you know, but you have to bear in mind that we're, we're in a dry season for most of South Africa. It's only really the Western Cape that's in, our, mm. in the wet season at the moment. And we still have that wet season uh, to come to fill up those, those dam levels. Mm. So can we expect uh, quite a bit more rain in Cape Town the next month or so? Well, we always hope so. Um, you know, cl uh, climate models, or not climate, climate data shows that September and April have more or less the same amount of rainfall in Cape Town. So mm. just to give you an idea. Um, and of course, we still get those fronts coming through right the way through to November. Um, so, ho and then it, it starts to peter off as we go into summer. Um, but then there are little lows <coughs> that come along along the way. So. From a water perspective, it would be really great for us to have a little bit more rainfall. I know that Cape Townians hate the winter to be drawn out for so long and they prefer to get on the beach as quickly as possible. Um, but obviously from an environmental perspective, we'd really like a little bit more rainfall. Mm. Candice, of course, it's uh, imperative that South Africans are, are vigilant about their use of water. What are your top three sort of water saving tips? Okay, well, um, the first one might sound a little bit strange, but um, putting something like a brick in your cistern of your toilets at home, um, every time you flush, there's 40 liters of fresh, drinkable water that goes down the drain. So that, for me, is one of those things that it's just a complete waste of water to see all of that drinkable water um, going down into the sewage system again and obviously having to go mm. through the cleaning process. Um, if you shower, you know, obviously shower instead of bath. And if you do shower, then try and use a water saving shower head. Um, and one of the easiest things to fix is make sure that none of your taps are dripping. Um, you know, a dripping tap, you can lose huge amounts of water through a dripping mm. tap. I mean, if you put a plug in and you see how much water fills up with that dripping tap over a 24 hour period, um, it really is just a whole lot of wasted water. And one of my, I'm going to give you one more, okay. just because I'm feeling generous today. <laughs> um, it's one thing that I, I um, practice at home, and that's if you know if you have a, a glass of water lying around, rather than throwing that out, put it into your plants or put it into your garden. So if you have um, any sort of water that you're mm. not using that is of you know okay standard, don't throw it down the drain because that then has to go through the whole system again. Rather just throw it into something that will have a better use. So I just wanted to ask you about the shower versus bath. Surely that depends on how long you shower for. So is there like a recommended <laughs> length? <laughs> that is true. Apparently, uh, I'm not sure what the actual recommended length is, but obviously shorter is better. And yeah. if you have those um, water saving uh, attachments, they definitely do help. And it doesn't compromise then on the strength of the, of the shower and the water coming out of it. Of course, okay. Right, Candice, thank you for your insight today. Sure, no problem.